Are you ready for our next exciting story from Duki, Suki, and Big Mo? You remember in our last chapters, we read about the fight. We read about spindly legs. Today's chapter, A Cry in the Night. Suddenly, Big Mo heard a strange sound. Perhaps it was the cry of an animal, for there were many strange sounds in the jungle at night. Then it came again, a pitiful sound, like a child crying. Yet this was common, for the leopards and panthers made a sound like that. Maybe I have been drinking too freely from the big gourd, said Big Mo. I'm hearing strange noises. Next, I will be seeing strange things. Kolo was right. I've been drinking too much for my good. He heard it again. Was it an animal growling? The sound seemed to be coming from the direction of the path that led to the house. Big Mo took one of the burning sticks from the fire, held it high as a torch, and peered into the dark. He caught a glimpse of three wild dogs of the jungle, snarling and snapping at each other. They seemed to be quarreling over something on the ground. One of the dogs was walking backward up the hill, dragging something, shaking it now and then in his teeth. As Big Mo came closer, the dogs growled savagely. Holding the torch closer, Mo could see that there was something moving, something alive in the bundle. Go away, shouted Mo, waving the flaming stick at the dogs. They snapped fiercely, but then backed away, slipping quietly into the darkness of the jungle. Mo held the torch so that he could see what the dogs had been dragging from inside the depths of the dirty cloth. Rapping, there came a pitiful cry. It was not the cry of an animal. It was the cry of a human baby. Mo pushed aside the corner of the blanket. It was a baby, a tiny brown baby. You want to see the picture? There's a picture of Big Mo with his stick from the fire that he used as a torch, scaring off those three dogs. And there you see the little bundle that the dogs were dragging in which there seems to be a little baby. Gently, Mo lifted the bundle and carried it to the house. He looked back to see if the dogs were following him, but they were nowhere to be seen. As he felt the squirming, crying infant struggle in the blanket, his heart gave a leap. This was alive. This bundle did not crumble in his hands, as had the one of the on the funeral pile. Suppose this was a baby that had been on a funeral pile. But how did the dogs get it? Dogs are afraid of fire. How could they snatch it from the flames? Mo carried the bundle to the house, put another stick on the fire, and sat down to examine the contents of the bundle. What have we here? He said as he held the little one on his lap. The baby fastened in a dirty blanket, covered with leaves and stickers. One corner of the blanket had been torn by the sharp teeth of the dogs. As Mo examined the blanket, he saw that this was not the usual wrapping for babies about to be burned. This was not a little, a dark little shroud but a light wrapping blanket, the kind mothers used on the tiny ones to protect their tender skin from the hot sun. As the baby cried piteously, Big Mo removed the blanket. He noticed that the infant's back was scratched and bleeding from being dragged over the sharp stones on the path. This will never do, he said, arising and going into the house. He lighted the lamp on the bench poured water into the basin, and gently bathed the tiny back. 
the baby cried, even though Big Mo was as gentle as could be with his rough hands. Oh, don't cry, little one. Don't cry, he said soothingly. I'm not trying to hurt you. After the cooling bath, Mo patted on some oil, and the cry ceased for a few moments. You feel better now, don't you, said Mo. Now try to find something to wrap you in. Your blanket is too dirty. An idea came to him. Strainers, he said. I have plenty of new white milk strainers. They are soft and white and clean. I will wrap you in a milk strainer. When Big Mo had wrapped the baby in a clean white milk strainer, he sat down to look at her. She was so small and helpless, she puckered up her mouth and began to cry. Don't do that, said Mo. Then he realized that she was probably hungry. Little Spindly Legs, too, was small and helpless, but she could get on her wobbly legs and find dinner to give her strength. But this baby had no mother. How long had she been without food? When Big Mo lifted her to his cheek, the baby felt around with its mouth for something to eat. I guess it's up to me to do something, said Mo. But what do babies eat when there isn't a mother? Rice? No, without teeth. She couldn't eat rice. In some cases, Mo had heard that people had used rice water mixed with rice whiskey. Not the drink from the big gourd, said Mo, shaking his head. That would never do. It would be too much, too strong for this little one. It's even too strong for me. Suddenly, one of the cows bawled out in the enclosure. And again, Mo thought of spindly legs. People in the village did not feed their babies cow's milk. That was for calves. Surely there must be something. The baby might starve to death right here in his arms. Just then, spindly legs called. Ma! All right, spindly legs. If it's good enough for you, it should be good enough for the tiny one. For tonight, anyway. I can't let her starve. I will mix up something. The milk in a big jug was still warm. Mo placed the baby on his sleeping mat while he dipped milk into a coconut shell. Then he wrapped in a little water. I'm sorry. Then he poured in a little water and sweetened it with a few drops of honey. Perhaps this will do for tonight, said Mo. Tomorrow I will ask someone for advice. Big Mo tore off a small piece of a new white strainer, dipped a corner in the mixture, and then squeezed the drops into the baby's open mouth. She swallowed the drops and cried again. Time after time, Big Mo squeezed milk into the little cloth, and finally the baby was satisfied and went to sleep. As Big Mo held her in his arms, he wondered where she had come from. What would he do with her? What would the charm doctor do if he found a baby in Moe's house? What would Cola think? He would surely accuse him of taking one of those bundles from a fun funeral pyre. What would the village authorities do about it? He could not keep her hidden. Someone would be sure to tell. Big Mo decided he would carry her to the village in the morning. When he took the milk to the market, he would tell his story and make inquiries. Surely she belonged to someone. The baby stirred. Mo squeezed some more milk into her mouth, and she slept again. Mo laid her down on his mat. Then he washed the soiled blanket in the basin and hung it on a bush to dry. He returned to the house, put the bamboo gate in front of the door, and stretched out on the mat beside the sleeping baby. And thus concludes chapter four, A Cry in the Night.